Hi, everyone. Welcome back to week nine of Joyful Journeys, our interview series following the spring 2024 curriculum of Girls on the Run of Northern Virginia. Um, I am so excited to be joined today by a leader in um, the youth and girl empowerment sector in Northern Virginia, um, in the nonprofit sector, um, Daniel Craddock. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We're so excited to have you and have you speak with us um, as the girls are ramping up for their community impact projects this week. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So start by telling us um, and our audience a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your experience in the nonprofit sector and what you're doing now with your work to uh, further empowerment for young women. Okay, great. Well, I'm actually from Northern Virginia, so this is home. And so I'm really happy to talk to the girls here in Northern Virginia. And I started a nonprofit um, in 2010, and it was called Girls Inspired and Ready to Lead, and Girl Inc. for short. And what we did was empower girls through career exploration workshops, leadership development, and confidence building workshops. So teaching them about all the careers that they can aspire to, to go into, and we did that through having career conferences and also having women come in and speak. We also took girls to different companies so they could see what it was like to work at a company and meet different employees and women in leadership there. Um, we would also go to um, community service projects like the girls are doing right now, just so that they girls could learn leadership as well through community service. So we would have um, different projects, especially on Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. We would get together and have big projects to serve the community. And we would just also bring in um, leaders to talk about leadership as well, then give the girls different um, lessons, even camps on leadership, and really just exposing girls to a variety of successful women in, in different fields, and then also um, through STEM camps. So we also hosted a variety of STEM camps. We um, founded a camp called Focus in partnership with George Mason College of Science, and that's actually still going on today. Um, and this year will be 10 years. So we've been doing a lot in the community to um, inspire girls and empower them that they can lead, they can believe in their dreams, and they can be confident. That's amazing. I love yeah. that you have that whole background. It's almost like you're the next iteration of Girls on the Run or Heart and Soul. Like they're with us, they're learning all of those kind of like the baby steps of what it's like to be a leader and what it's like to mentor and what it's like to explore being confident and empowered. And then you take them and really ramp them up to the next level as they continue to get older. That's so cool. Yes. Yeah, so we worked with middle and high school girls and many of them are in this book that I wrote um, last May. So this book, um, Launchpad to Success, talks about different ways that 21 ways that students can prepare for their career, explore their interests to prepare for that career. And then another part of the book, we have 25 stories from girls who were in girl programs and now they're in college or out of college. So that's really inspiring to see their journeys of what they went through in middle school, high school school, how they were exploring interests and passions and being inspired by the women um, and different events that we had at Girl. And now you can see them just thriving in their careers. So um, that that's what I'm doing now, going to talk to other students about how to launch their dreams through um, career preparation and using that book as a tool for girls and, and students to um, prepare for their futures. Yeah, absolutely. Love it so much. Um, so you talked about when you had your nonprofit girl, that a big part of that was community engagement, um, giving back, especially, you know, in connection with Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, so this week, our participants are engaging in the Girls on the Run community impact projects, um, where each team is working together to give back in some sort of way. So some teams will host a bake sale and have the proceeds go to a local animal shelter, a very popular one I'm sure you can imagine among our elementary schoolers. Um, some take an environmental approach and they'll decide to clean up their school or their local park, um, and some take a people-focused approach where they want to recognize those in the community that don't get enough thanks, you know, people like their bus drivers and their custodians. So why do you think, um, you know, it is so important to instill these kind of values of giving back at a young age, at an elementary school age? Yes, I think it's part of leadership too. I think you 
um, can become confident when you're leading, when you are um, just giving back to others and it shows that you're selfless and to be a leader, you should be selfless and want to serve others. And you get to learn the needs of your community too at a young age when you're looking even just around your school about what um, is needed. And again, like you said, what you're passionate about, if they're passionate about animals, how they can help animals. Um, so I always bring bring it back to passion and helping girls define what they're passionate about, what they're interested about, and then they can serve in that area and just looking around them to see um, a need. And it really helps them to go in the community because sometimes we don't know what's needed unless we go out there a little bit. And um, I remember I was mentoring at a middle school years ago and one of the, we did a service project just like this. I helped the girls come up with the project and go through the different plans of um, you know, starting a project, coming up with an idea. So their idea, they looked around them and they saw at their school, there's a lot of trash on the playground. So they wanted to clean up the trash. So we talked about what are the steps to organize a project around beautifying their playground. Um, so they wrote a letter to the principal asking for support and the principal provided trash bags and we had a day and they went around and cleaned up their playground. So when you really, um, you know, start at a young age, it helps them just see what's going on around them and how they can improve the world. Yeah. Not just their passion, not just improving the world, but also giving them those, those skills about kind of project planning and how do you accomplish a big goal? How can you have a big idea, but break it down into smaller chunks to be able to achieve that goal too, which is exactly. awesome. And working um, as a team, which I know you all talk about as well. Yeah. yeah, working as a team and that goal setting and that goal accomplishment through small steps together is kind of all what we're we're all about and what the girls are building up to, right? This week, mm -hmm. it's the community impact project all together as a team. And next week, it's the big 5K all together as a team. So it all ties in together, which is so awesome and exciting. And we love that you have that same perspective, you know, as a leader in the youth mentorship space and the youth empowerment space that, hey, these kids do need to learn these skills and this is how they can do that while also giving back is really cool. Um, so on, kind of on that note, how do you think volunteerism helps develop leadership skills in youth? How does it directly kind of correlate to a youth participates in volunteerism and now they've gained X or Y skill towards leadership? Yes, I think it not only helps them if they want to be a leader of a group, but just also personally, um, because I know we always talk about leadership, but not everybody wants to be in a leadership role, but we can also lead in our own personal lives. And that looks like making um, healthy decisions for, you know, each other, for yourselves and for the people around you. So I think just giving them that confidence and um, that ownership of making decisions for themselves and, you um, decisions that are going to benefit their community as well. So if they do want to lead, it gives them those skills to, um, like you said, plan, organize, break things into um, different parts, goal setting to achieve those goals. So it helps them develop those skills and also being a member of a community and, um, you know, a citizen of the world. Again, when we see those needs that are out there. So I think it gives them skills like empathy, seeing how, um, you know, others are living and really be more compassionate about the community. And that's important when you lead because you want to to serve others when you when you lead as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. It all ties back to what you said at the top, that when it comes to leadership, it should be an act of selflessness. It should be in a spirit of wanting to give back naturally as a leader. And that's where lead your leadership should stem from. And with the girls engaging in this community impact project, they get that taste of what it's like of, of to work kind of those empathy muscles and kind of to be able to put themselves in somebody else's shoes and see something from a different perspective that they might not necessarily have been exposed to or gotten to think about, you know, in their own everyday lives. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So my last question for you um, is why do you think building confidence in young girls is so important? Like, why is it so important that we get these girls at the elementary school level versus, you know, starting to work with them at the high school level to develop that confidence? Yes. Well, I think we definitely want to believe in ourselves first. So it's important so that you can first believe in yourself because nobody will believe in you unless you first believe in yourself. So it's important to develop that confidence. 
so that you know who you are. And as you get older, um, even I think at the elementary, I've heard, um, you know, things that aren't nice that the elementary school kids are doing, but it gets worse as you get older, you know, the bullying or pressure from social media. So you just want to be able to have a strong foundation and confidence within yourself. So when peer pressure comes or the bullying or, um, you know, just negative thoughts or um, self-talk as well, just that you can have a positive outlook on who you are. And when, you know, people say things that aren't true, you don't have to believe it. You can just know who you are. And also, um, it just helps you to achieve those goals that you set for yourself. It helps you to believe that you can do it, believe in yourself. And I think overall, it'll help you be a better leader. I think it'll help you in school academically, again, because you believe you have that confidence that you can achieve. So it's really um, important to establish that strong confidence and foundation at a young age so as you grow it just only builds and um you know you're not easily torn down by life's challenges yeah a hundred percent and you know as we are here on week nine of ten we're almost at the finish line um everything that you've said is everything that our girls are getting at girls on the run or their heart and soul program right they're getting that foundational um instruction from their coaches and encouragement that you have your own unique star power, as we like to call it, and you have to let that star power shine. It's not going to be the same as your best friends, um, but that's okay. And that's what's going to set you apart and let you be successful through life. And, you know, as our girls are in elementary and middle school, high school is right around the corner. So please, one more time, if you want to show your book and oh, yeah. just let us know, you know, launch pad to success, any parents out there who, you know, you want to make sure your girl continues her journey of empowerment. Um, you know, we definitely recommend that you check out Danielle's book as they take on the next chapter of their lives as well. Yes. Thank so, you. Danielle, thank you so much for being here with us today. We're so appreciative of your time and your insight into our community impact project and our overall empowerment, working to making the world a better and a brighter place for our girls and our youth. Happy to support anytime. Thank you. Thanks. This episode of Joyful Journeys is brought to you by Girls on the Run of Northern Virginia.